Hi. In this video, we will talk about Metagliffel theorem. Basically, this theorem proves the existence of a meromorphic function with a given prescribed uh, poles. That means uh, we are given with uh, as the infinite sequence uh, which diverges to infinity, and we will be proving that there exists a meromorphic function with poles exactly at the points which are given to us. Okay. So let us uh, look at the statement briefly. You start from a sequence which diverges to infinity and a sequence of polynomials are given and we assume that the, each of these uh, polynomials uh, do not have constant terms that is for a specific reason of course we will discuss about why these assumptions are required and all. Now, now given this sequence and this sequence of polynomials without constant term we will prove that there exists a meromorphic function whose poles are exactly at these points b nu and the corresponding singular part by that uh, what I mean you expand the function in terms of uh, the Lorentz expansion in terms uh, around this point b nu and uh, there will be negative parts definitely because it is a pole. So those negative part or the singular part will be exactly b nu of 1 by z minus b nu. So this is how do we uh, state the result. Now uh, in general it tells you that how does how does such a function look like looks like so a general meromorphic function with this kind can be written in this form so what happens is that we will uh, collect all the singular parts and take the sum and you subtract uh, another polynomial this is small p nu in fact uh, this is for the convergence of the series infinite series and uh, this will be the general form of this plus some analytic function that is arbitrary okay so here this small p nu is choose, suitably chosen so that uh, this becomes uh, a convergent series so that is the uh, that is the statement of the mittag leffler theorem before moving to the proof uh, let me tell you that uh, this theorem can be generalized into so it means we are doing it on the, the complex plane but we can do it on arbitrary the domains i mean subsets of uh, complex plane also so now let me uh, come to the proof what happens, uh, first of all we assume that all b nu's are non-zero. Non so we consider this case first. Then uh, you have a neighborhood around, uh, means you take a disk of radius mode b nu. So this is the disk. So since it is an uh, isolated pole, we know that uh, this polynomial in 1 by z minus p nu will be analytic in this case. Because the only uh, possibility where it, it loses its analyticity is the point at b nu which will be on the circle uh, on the circle so inside this disk this will be analytic now you look at the finite taylor development uh, say so this is the finite taylor development this is what we take to be the small p nu okay so now the difference of this will convert to zero in fact uh, from the remain estimate of uh, taylor development we do this we have the finite Taylor development up to this where the n nu plus 1th term is this and we choose the uh, polynomial up to uh, of degree n mu as uh, small p nu so difference will be this remainder term which you can estimate in this way so we are estimating it over the disk mode b nu by 2 uh, disk of radius mode b nu by 2 okay now what happens uh, you get this estimate and this is very rigorously done here so you don't have to worry about this now what happens is that you choose uh, you see you have the freedom to choose b nu so large because b nu after it diverges to infinity so uh, and n mu can be anything you can to choose it large enough because uh, this taylor development is applicable for any any integer so with us uh, with that large choice what happens is that uh, the quantity in the series term the terms in the series will be bounded by 2 power minus nu therefore it is convergent so hence uh, by comparison test we get the series converges absolutely so the small p nu is so chosen that this, that series become convergent okay now uh, now what happens uh, b nu tends to infinity that you know therefore uh, we note this so mode z less than or equal to mode b nu by 4 is satisfied for all z except at the points b nu so when nu is large so the convergence is uh, uniform on all combat subset you take any combat subset uh, there will be finitely many b nu will be there because uh, b nu's are diverging to infinity 
so convergence will be uniform on all combat subsets so except at these points uh, the sequence uh, this is a sequence of analytic function which converges to something so that limit will be analytic except at this point so on c minus b nu you have a series converges to a function uniformly on all combat subsets hence by weierstrass theorem you have uh, analyticity of the uh, limit function on z minus b nu so that limit function is analytic on z minus b nu so the only poles are b nu which are poor so which are the singularities uh, hence uh, we obtain the meromorphy function so now now this represents a meromorphic function in the plane with poles at b nu so we obtain what we needed uh, with the additional condition that b nu is a non zero but if b nu is zero for some case that uh, that will not cause any trouble for us because if b nu equal zero for some nu there will be only finitely many such things so you can uh, corresponding p you can consider the corresponding p nu of 1 by z and add them so that will not affect the convergence of the series so hence uh, that was a very small restriction so another thing you have to keep in your mind is that so we obtain so the general form will be uh, f z plus this series plus some analytic function you can add any arbitrary analytic function the property will not change it will remain meromorphic and uh, uh, poles at b nu so that is a proof of uh, uh, metagliflu theorem now we should keep uh, we should add these remarks here why do we need the assumption b nu tends to infinity that's the first assumption we yeah so now if there are only finitely many b nus then uh, to construct such a function is very easy you just need to take the sum of uh, this p mu p nu of 1 by z minus z so you don't have to worry about the convergence and all so hence this will give you the uh, this, uh, desired function now if there are infinitely many things it cannot be bounded because bounded means it will have a limit point and uh, that limit point will be a non isolated singularity so hence uh, what happens if b nu does not diverge to infinity then uh, uh, the if the it's an infinite sequence which does not diverge to infinity then you can you will obtain a bound uh, subsequence that is bounded and will still have a, another uh, limit point so that will create a non isolated singularity so this is the problem why this is why we require uh, b nu to diverge to infinity similarly if you have constant term for p nu then also that will create some problem that will not become the singular part because the constant term will be part of the principal part that's it now we have uh, described an example here you consider the function pi square by sin square pi z uh, this has double pole at uh, each integer which is uh, you can easily describe and you, uh, since it is a double pole the dorsal series expansion will be will have two negative parts but uh, the coefficient of 1 by z you can found to be zero and coefficient of uh, 1 by z square found to be one so the singular part will be 1 by z square and using periodicity what happens so use periodicity here so what is that so use periodicity of this function so sin square pi z minus n is equal to sin square pi z so the singular part of z equal to n will be 1 by z minus n square so now you consider this series the, the infinite series with 1 by z minus n square so this is convergent for all z not equal to n it is obtained by comparing with the summation 1 by n square now the convergence is uniform all combat subsets excluding the integer so the limit point uh, function is analytic on z minus z so that is again by weierstrass theorem so now you have two functions pi square by sin square pi z and the infinite limit of the infinite series both are meromorphic uh, with the poles at z equal to n of same order <coughs> therefore their difference will be an analytic function okay so this you can write as pi square by sin square pi z equal to this series plus g z where g z is entire now our aim is to prove that g is identically zero therefore we will obtain an infinite series infinite series representation for this pi square by sin square pi z <coughs> so let us prove that i mean i think i we have already done this so our idea is that g is an entire function to prove that it is identically zero we will prove that it is bounded first and uh, it uh, goes to zero as uh, mode y tends to infinity some, somehow so that uh, it will be a bounded and their function reduces to a constant and that constant must be zero so that is what you are obtaining so this is easy because you have already obtained the periodicity of this thing 
much. And similarly, you will obtain periodicity of this uh, infinite sum because uh, if you add z plus, if you replace it by z plus 1, only the order of the term just shifted once. So it's again remain co convergent and the limit will be the same. So since both of them are periodic, g will be again periodic or period 1. So g of z plus 1 equal to g of z. Now put z equal to x plus i y, then you can easily prove that mode sine pi z all square is going to infinity as mode by tension infinity. Therefore, this goes to 0 uniformly as mode by tension infinity. Now you consider this region mode by greater than or equal to 1. I mean we uh, exclude this strip, this infinite strip and go something outside this strip. So there uh, you don't have any singularity. That is something you have to keep in your mind. No integers lie there. So this converges, so this uh, uh, series converges uniformly on all compact subset of uh, this uh, this play, this region. Uh, therefore, you can interchange the limit and order of summation because of uniform convergence. So if you apply limit mode by tension infinity inside, then you obtain zero here, hence the limit will be zero. So that goes to zero. Similarly, so both uh, both team goes to zero. Therefore, G set. Uh, since it is a difference of those two things, that will go to zero. So we consider G set here. So look at here. So you consider the uh, rectangle. So consider this strip where zero varying from zero varying from one. Uh, sorry, x varying from zero to one. So in this strip, uh, G set tends to zero whenever you take mode by tends to infinity. Uh, or in particular, you take mode by greater than equal to one and let mode by tends to infinity. Then that is zero because Oh, both other terms are zero. In the equation one, we had g z as a difference of pi square sin uh, pi square by sin square pi z and this series. Both goes to zero as mode by tension infinity. So g z tends to zero. So what happens that you look at this strip. Any compact set, g z will be bounded because g z is a continuous function. So outside the compact set, g z will be small because it goes to zero as mode by tension infinity. Hence it will be bounded and uh, therefore by Leoli's theorem it should be reduced, it should reduce to a constant and that constant should be zero because it has to go to zero as mode by tension infinity. So we prove that g is identically zero, hence we obtain the expression. Yeah, we have pi square by sine square pi set is equal to in this infinite series. So this gives you an infinite series representation for the function pi square by sine square pi set. So now I have added uh, several other such representations as, a, as an exercise or I will include it in the assignment section, we shall do that. And also it is uh, very interesting to learn about uh, Mittag-Leffler theorem and its history and other things. Uh, you can refer any, uh, any uh, means you can uh, google it and find it out. It seems to be very interesting and it will give you several interesting such, uh, representation and so on, you will see.